Smith and MacArthur need some time for Cowboy Boy. Renting equipment? Yeah, like in camera rentals. Oh. It's like it's a big industry. It is. Because camera gear, so, like, especially video gear, is so fucking expensive. It is. And it doesn't make sense for a lot of people to own it. <laughs> but when people rent the same lens every weekend, it's like, just fucking buy it, man. Like, come on. That's uh, the voice of Dan Bassini. <laughs> are, we, are we into it already? This is it started. This oh, is but, Cowboy Boys Podcast. Holy shit. And uh, what do you think of our shoestring budget and all of our gear? You know, it's it's actually it's more production than my podcast. You oh. know, sort of. Well, that's the cobbler's children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, what? No shoes for the cobbler's children. The cobbler's children has the worst uh, shoes in the town. <laughs> it's also uh, the bishop's daughter. Is the Mormon version of that phrase? Or the bishop's daughter. Yeah, she's the most run through woman in town. <laughs> no, yeah. The bishop's daughter is always like the sluttiest. I think there's like a Catholic version, the priest daughter too. Yeah, that sounds about right. But it's always like she's the How most the wicked. <laughs> Oh wait, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they think about Catholicism. I was like, that doesn't seem right, but I, I went with it at first. You know, I was like, no, that it. one. You said it with confidence, and I was on. I was fully on board. It was so inaccurate. <laughs> the priest was a daughter. Yeah, she would be a slut because he's fucking doing some wild shit. He shouldn't be. I guess she some priests have kids because they they uh, take the cloth after the fact. That's the way to do it. They shouldn't let people go to like what is it catechism no it's uh i don't remember Catholic school yeah that's just it's like called. it's In like general <laughs> like be a cop for you know 45 years take the pension and then go into catholicism you know yeah okay <laughs> i think cops should have to take a vow of celibacy when oh they're <laughs> no that would only make them more angry more <laughs> yeah we don't it, dude, if that. i couldn't if i couldn't do anything oh i'm gonna shoot some minorities about it <laughs> oh. <laughs> i'm so pent up that is what incels kind of do oh my mm-hmm. i was uh, actually i was texting shane yesterday i was in the middle of a fucking like almost shootout on the west side highway yesterday what happened? It was absolutely bananas. Was it, your fault? it was my fault. Yeah, <laughs> they were shooting at me. Uh, no, I was. Uh, I was with my buddy. We were doing come back from a photo shoot in Brooklyn, and we were on the West Side Highway, like waiting to get and during the big nightmare loop to get through the Holland Tunnel. And all of a sudden, one of the like a cop car drives across the median, like the bike lane median gap. We're like, what the fuck? This cop, what a fucking dickhead, you know? Yeah. Blocks traffic. And then we're like, what the fuck are they doing? And then all of a sudden they're out of the car with guns drawn. I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> and they rush past our car and they they run up to a like a white Jeep SUV behind us and they're just screaming, get out of the fucking car, exit the vehicle, out of the car. And then all of a sudden the like a bunch of more cops show up, all like pointing guns at this fucking car. The car rams the car behind us rams the car next to it almost sideswipes us and like finds the like threads the needle and fucking jets it 120 down the west side highway and the cops were like, <laughs> bashing on the window like with the butts of their pistol <laughs> that's crazy dude. and uh and then all the cops like scramble back to my, their car and like run and i couldn't find a fucking thing like about it like there's nothing about it of course not it's a very mm. normal thing to happen it, it's true yeah there would have to be like a full-on shooting for it to even make like a blurb you know, I I read on I, I saw on the news that New York is a war zone, and yeah. it's, it's it's so not. true. <laughs> I know it's, it's always the people who live in like the Midwest who are like, oh my God, New York, you can't even go near it, and it's like, yeah, when you when can't. will you be here? Don't <laughs> yeah, but don't, don't come here. Don't, don't come here. Actually, <laughs> the weather's I, miserable. I've made a horrible mistake. It is a war zone. Actually, there's shootings every day. Yep. The Hasidic yep. people here they fire guns at us. <laughs> They do <laughs> the Brooklyn it ha- types. <laughs> it happens all the time, man. The uh, yeah, I don't know. That that's kind of like the secrets out on Jersey too. Like I live in Jersey City, and that was always the thing. There was always this weird like divide of like fucking Jersey. I don't want to go near Jersey, especially New Yorkers. Who are like J- Jersey might as well doesn't not exist. You Wait, know? every time I drive through Jersey, I. And the most mad I've ever been. <laughs> like I'm furious. I mean, that sounds like you're you're not built for it. Then I don't know. I don't know. I'm built. It sounds I, like you're soft. I'm soft because of your terrible infrastructure. It's the then you haven't driven in Pennsylvania. If you want to talk about bad on highway systems, I have driven in Pennsylvania on their cobblestone roads that are up a forty five degree incline. <laughs> yeah, and that makes more sense than New Jersey. <laughs> turn left, right. Turn left ten feet ago, or you're gonna have to go forty five minutes. And that sounds like a very specific part three of New more tolls. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's the only part. Yeah, it's just p- the turnpike. Yeah. Oh, dude, I hate it. It actually, the New Jersey Turnpike makes me insane. It's like New- if- the New Jersey Turnpike was rated like it's considered one of the greatest like 
um, infrastructure creations in like the history of the country or something. It's, By it's who? like the worst Whoever parts makes of this kind of thing. Like, 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 <laughs> let's take the worst part of LA driving and then also add New York to it to make it yeah. the worst possible. To connect New York and Philly. Yeah, and like. then you age it for 40 years or 50 years or whatever and it's like falling apart and there's just like roving bands of wild dogs that control it. It's exactly it's like terrible. that. terrible. Yeah. But I haven't yeah, I've only experienced the turnpike. What's the rest of Jersey like? I See, I'm born and raised. I love it. I still live there. I get to keep that little chip on my shoulder, yeah, you yeah. know? And uh, Late night making fun of you your whole life. <laughs> just yeah, well, that's Jersey's trash. Like, literally, uh, it's just like the same people in the Midwest saying New York's a war zone. It's like yeah. the entire country shits on New Jersey. Like, whether they have any experience of it at all. And, and, the, and the people who do have experience, it's just a turnpike or Newark Airport or, like, seeing the fucking, like, Linden refinery plant on the side of the mm-hmm. highway but like new jersey it's got the shore it's got like if you go like northwest new jersey like it's like appalachia it's like the mountains there's the delaware water gap it's fucking beautiful uh i grew up in central jersey i was 45 minutes to philly hour to new york hour to the beach like yeah, you can go anywhere but where you're at right now because you don't want to be in Jersey, right? <laughs> yeah. I look, mean, look, at all these, look at all these other places we can go. You know, but it's, it's <laughs> such awesome. a hub to everything. But no, it's, it's it's a really cool place. I mean, it's very diverse in terms of terrain. Uh, it's also, sub, I think, like the most uh, densely populated yeah, oh yeah, in absolutely. America, which is insane. Because it's so close to everywhere places people want to be, yeah, you know? That's scary. Yeah, it's like the, the ultimate, it's like one gigantic suburb. <laughs> kind of. Like, it's like the access point for all these places. There, there was something that was really funny that just happened was uh, the city of Newark. You know, like the sister city program. I don't actually know the details yeah, of what yeah, entails yeah. of the sister city. I think there's some sort of money exchanged. But some guy scammed the city of Newark into being sister cities where the place that didn't exist. Whoa. No way. So but, fucking but funny. Land? Yeah, essentially. <laughs> 20, Dude, I, I, I don't remember the details, but literally some guy posed as some kind of dignitary of some sort that's so and funny. like created a sister city program with like some middle eastern country that doesn't exist that's crazy it's so funny and like no one did the research or maybe it exists it existed <laughs> oh. but no longer does and so they're looking at their 1980 textbooks and be like look it's right there that's a real <laughs> yeah, city yeah, yeah. It's, that's it's their flag constantinople you know <laughs> <laughs> dude that's so but once i when i bounced at the bar there were all these japanese people that came in and they were like dress very well some of them were in traditional japanese garb and i used to live in salt lake city yeah and they're all there and i'm like oh my god what are you what are you doing here like they're so they're, they're like clearly just from japan and they were like oh salt lake city is our sister city and oh, i was like man. we don't know you exist yeah, yeah <laughs> we exactly. have no idea i fucking wow. i'm so sorry bro they're they're, no they're, idea. they're sending utah money and so the other way around you know yeah yeah i was like <laughs> damn you guys came here because of that i fucking i didn't even know you were real and it, well it makes sense though because we're like cold a lot of the year and stuff and there's a lot oh, of places like that in japan temperature wise yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're very like, honorable oh yeah the mormon samurai <laughs> 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 we place a high uh honor we have a high honor rating i don't know yeah dude. <laughs> it's true i mean i will say mormons and in japanese people have a lot in common salt lake is the cleanest major city i've ever been in yeah uh, the most well taken care of okay. as long as you don't go into one particular part the they like they corralled all the homeless people and vagrants into one specific part of the city so if you're a tourist you go to salt lake and you're like this is weird like everything's nice everyone's taken well, care of and then it like everything's wh- nice and clean and then there's the mormon part that's even nicer and cleaner yeah yeah to, like yeah. a creepy <laughs> level you're yeah, like yeah you're like, it's you like have, does anyone actually live here yeah yeah like and the- then but 1 a.m rolls around and then like street people come out and you're like oh the city has a huge problem oh my there's God. homeless people everywhere it's really surreal yeah i i remember watching something about like bar culture in salt lake city and like how like they have to pour alcohol behind a like they call it the zion curtain it's or like something restaurants. yeah yeah they yeah. got rid of that but oh they did okay yeah yeah fine but it was like oh even alcohol can't be poured within sight of the public i like it they have Do a drink it, it makes device it, ooh i'm sinning <laughs> ooh i'm drinking a beer and god is sad 
Yeah, I mean, tonight, like, oh, you're you're drinking a beer and it's all normal. And you're like, whatever. But if you if you know someone's angry at you, just having a hate boner that you're drinking a beer, oh, makes that is, it, it it's an easy way to rebel for sure. I oh, think yeah. it's like a little magic trick. Like the guys, <laughs> like you want a whiskey, <laughs> and pulls the curtain <laughs> back, opens it up, and he's like, I got a fucking whoa. what's this bottle? Closes the curtain again. It's fun. It's a little show. Yeah, they open it. There's a beer there. The Statue of Liberty's disappeared, but the beer. Yeah, <laughs> dude. <laughs> that's what's up i don't know i thought and that, and now they have they just have like a little attachment that goes on bottles that measures so you oh, always it's like every shot is exactly measured it's like it's, impossible to you to over a, a lot of states have that yeah that's true a lot of people i saving guess. money it kind of sucks i think it takes away from the art of being a bartender that's true just kind of pouring it with your heart you know yeah some bartenders you're like oh that guy's like a very exact some bartenders you're like if you go to him he's gonna screw you you want to go to this guy because he's gonna. He's got the up. heavy hand. This is. All, I only know this from bouncing. I I have no personal experience with it, but <laughs> I love how much you know about it, though. It's yeah, great. yeah, dude. I know way too much about bar culture. I've been in so many bars my whole life. For a guy who doesn't drink, hates bars, hates socializing <laughs> for the sake of socializing. I despise it. I hate parties. I hate drunk people. I hate small talk. Why I you hate stand all up? of it. I know. <laughs> and I've been in bars so, so, so much because of stand up yeah. and then ba- like mm. working in bars my whole life. I love drunk people. Uh, see, I don't so- know. <laughs> I went. I, I I was straight edge until I was twenty one. Oh. Uh, XXX till XXI, yeah, 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 as they dude. say. Wow, you're Ooh. the mean. And wait, uh, when did you get in? What do you mean? When did you start being straight edge? Oh, like I didn't taste alcohol until I was twenty one. Oh, okay. I yeah. thought I thought you would like were like I made a hard stance. I mean, I was I was I was part of the the hardcore culture of of you know I wasn't xing up, but I was okay. I was wearing like a drug fucking free belt with like a big ass belt buckle in in like the mid two thousands. You know, I didn't have my first beer till I was twenty two. Really? Just because I was like I don't know, I'm Mormon. That's true. Yeah, yeah. The X, 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 X Mormon till I die. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this beer is awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, what was your first beer? Paps to Blue Ribbon. Okay, all right. At a party. Some cred. Was, yeah, was... At a Heineken. Actually, Dang. the first first alcohol I ever had was a shot at Jack Daniels, which was also not great. But it was. Uh, but yeah, I, I went to more crazy parties as a not drinking person than I ever did as yeah. a drunk person. Like well, I you missed just that. remembered them. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> drunk people I mean, probably go to those I, parties. I, they were there, but I they don't remember them. I had a lot of friends. Like I was, it was the time I was like in a band, and we would just like, go to parties as like the band and whatnot, and like. Dude, just like I remember going to a friend's beach house and I got there like the next day. Like they were there that night and I showed up like noon the next day. And like already there was like an ass shaped hole in the wall. <laughs> like already someone broke part of the stairs. There was a like a note written in like a half dry Sharpie on the back of a paper plate. And then someone like stabbed a steak knife into the wall to like hold the note to the wall. It's so funny that that's, that kind of shit just happens, but not from alcohol with like the people I hang out yeah, with. Yeah, mm. it's just it's a mentality. You yeah, know? dude, it is a mentality. And the, Being an the alcohol idiot, just lets that mentality out a little more sometimes for some people. Yeah, yeah. The amount of people who, dude, I dated a girl for a while that thought she thought I would get drunk and just she was she wouldn't try to call me out on it. And then eventually she was like, do you get drunk? Are you drunk? It was like me and my friends like had built a sled and like padded it with pillows and then use like bungee cords to wrap <laughs> a giant like a uh, laundry basket over it to create a shell. And we were pushing each other down this huge like uh, stairwell at a hotel. But this wasn't we weren't staying at the hotel the hotel opened and it had a giant like two story all the way down carpet stairwell (laughs) and we said it would be cool to do that so we built the apparatus brought it to a hotel we weren't (laughs) staying (laughs) at so okay, that we could do this we were, did not film it <laughs> it wasn't a bit it was literally just us being like fuck yeah dog this is gonna be awesome the, the real twist is that you, yeah you weren't staying there you just knew it existed and you built something for in our mid 20s <laughs> all would, of us it'd be stupid to do it at the hotel you were staying at you'll get, yeah, kicked, yeah, out. Yeah, you'll get yeah. kicked out yeah two of us were fathers like it was <laughs> it was it all of us sober and then she was like you are you drunk do you get drunk why would you do that and i was like 
No, I like to have fun. <laughs> you should tell That's like just guys being dudes moment, you know, yeah. dudes rock. You should uh whenever you're traveling, ask uh your your agent and be like, All right, what are the two what hotel has the like craziest like pool? <laughs> it's like, Oh, this this hotel is the best pool. All right, book book me a room in the hotel next to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be at that one. How how close is the balcony to the pool? Yeah, and yeah. Do you think I can make it? You know? <laughs> how many stories? <laughs> hey, but some people they need they need a little alcohol to reach your normal childlike wonder levels it's true they do it's a medicinal beer yeah i yep. appreciate people who can get drunk and have fun but that's not what s- people in the world do yeah my fr- i have friends who get drunk i like when he gets drunk i love it <laughs> i have a lot of drunk friends where i'm like you should drink let's have a good time yeah let's yeah. get fucking weird and silly and go crazy but that's not what civilians are up to Civilians are getting as drunk Civilians. as possible. <laughs> <laughs> you're, like you're a drunk soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. A, you're a veteran in the alcohol wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <dude. laughs> you don't want to hear about what I got. No, do. Yeah, it's like <laughs> that. It's like that. That like combat enhancing like steroid that they're giving like people in ISIS. Yeah, that, like, yeah, dude. <laughs> well, listen, Mac is a warrior for Christ, and when he gets drunk, it's appropriate to the situation. Other people are like, I'm gonna get blackout, and then I'm gonna fight someone over perceived slights i'm gonna like you, you, r- harass you, women i was gonna say you do that first one <laughs> sober <laughs> hey 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 <laughs> again <laughs> what yeah so i well, firstly they're not slights i'm perceiving there's well no i am perceiving them but they're Every real is a perception hold on the, but the, often the people are drunk and they deserve it oh okay <laughs> yeah hey no i'm victimizing drunk people because it's funny that's a different thing that i'm allowed to do because i'm straight edge it, are there gangs of people who are like all right i gotta be drunk so we can go fight the straight edge people um like, back in the day they're like, called, we called boston the city of boston <laughs> fights your straight edge population that's why the straight edge kids in boston it's, it's are like crazy. when you know the state fair comes around it's like the firemen versus like uh you know versus the, the, the police cops, boxing or football match it's it's the drunk people versus the the straight edge hardcore kids at the end of the night it'll be very funny i'm like hey i can't fight you yet let me let me, let me <laughs> <laughs> I need to, I need to loosen up mm-hmm. i do remember when i uh when i first was straight edge i lived in a smaller place so when you would go to a show it would be like crust punks and emo kids and like tough guys straight edge guys and like regular do it would be everybody and they would all enjoy the show yeah then i moved to like a bigger place i started to go on tour and i, I was like oh it's straight edge versus everybody mm. yeah it's like hardcore kids versus everybody and yeah. there would be fights and it would get crazy the only people who would be on our side are like sharps <laughs> you know and they're so rare you like rarely ever see them yeah. people don't even understand what they are they think they're nazis all the time which yeah. is probably why there's so little of them today Dude, what is a sharp a sharp is a skinhead against racism they're like they're kind of like <laughs> a throwback to what if the mod like communist punks yeah or like, like the mod skinhead era of like british where they're you're exactly you're, it, they still exist in britain and australia yeah. like they're but you see them like they're wearing boots they wear suspenders and white t-shirts what if i became a nar what's that a nazi against racism yeah. <laughs> you're a nazi against yeah. racism Dude, we're, we're <laughs> just, just a real like, stickler I'm fucking we, we like we see we like the blacks <laughs> we like the women's and the, the down syndromes but the jews <laughs> <laughs> only one <laughs> listen i'll give you all of them i think that, i think i'm being reasonable i think if i just give me one <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. so funny. I've, I've reached the, the state of enlightenment where I still drink, but I still have like a straight edge mindset where I look oh. down on everybody else. You know? There you go. That's, <laughs> that's the way to do it. Healthy. It's a very aristocratic approach. It's like, no, like I can have a couple beers, but if you do it, it's like really gauche. You know? I'm, it's real tacky. <laughs> I'm holding this together. You look sloppy. You're a mess. <laughs> you're falling apart. Yeah. yeah. Is that, you're not sure that's the beer goggles talking? <laughs> you know? it's See, I'm a big dude. It takes a lot for me. I have to like plan if yeah. I'm going to get drunk. Like, I need, big, I need to eat a light meal. I can't have like a big dinner if I'm going to get drunk later. You know? Yeah, you're too powerful. I'm too, <laughs> exactly. And I really need something that, to hold that power back. Uh, but yeah, it's like I need to... I, I joke, I have like one 4 a.m. night a year, and I got that out like at New Year's this year. Only nice. one 4 a.m. night? I have like night? one 4 a.m. night. That's when did you go? Night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm up every, every single night till really? 2 or 4. I slept for three hours last night, and I'm I'm surfing for like six and a half hours today. It's, so it's crazy. When it's, you, you go to Jersey all the time, you know? I do. I go to Jersey in the Rockaways in the same day sometimes. That's crazy. 
Yeah, it's it's actually it's really bad for me. I need to sleep better. I, I don't do that for people I love, let I, alone things I enjoy. <laughs> dude, I got sleeping meds, and I thought they would help me sleep, but all they don't. Sleeping meds are a fucking nightmare yeah. sometimes. I, I've avoided taking them because I was worried. I dislike them, and I know people who have become dependent on them. Oh yeah, and so I was kind of like. You know, I'm straight edge. So I'm okay with medicine. I would even take like I would take marijuana medicinally if it was prescribed to me for a very serious if ailment. Your, if your doctor with dreadlocks yeah, was like, hey, man. Yeah, my doctor with dreadlocks was like, hey, man, hey, man. you know what's gonna help with your depression, man? But like, yeah. I'm I'm okay with anyone using. I think it's when someone's abusing something recreationally when it becomes a. Pre- anyway, I'm pretty like you with diet coke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're not straight edge. You drink too many diet cokes. Some straight edge people would agree with. <laughs> you yeah, back yeah. in the early 2000s oh, yeah. i'll tell you that yeah the uh what was it, the uh ian mckay with the iced tea question <laughs> yeah that's so <laughs> funny dude i remember back in the day some someone tried to like bring that up with a bunch of straight edge guys and we were just like we'll beat the shit out of yeah. you he was like all right no, yeah. okay we can drink we caffeine don't abstain again. from violence yeah 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 <laughs> but um so like but I, I just thought it was boring the line. I was like, oh, I don't think... I think it would be like taking morphine for basic body aches, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. I finally gave in and I, I took one. I had a unprescribed one, so I have it for me. It's like an anti-anxiety and a antihistamine. Oh, so it's everything. So, so I was like, well, I have tons of anxiety and a little bit of... Allergy uh, histamine. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll take this. And I took it and uh, he's like, you take one. If it doesn't work, take two. If that doesn't work, take three. If that doesn't work, take four. So I <laughs> well like one a night to try, you know. Yeah. So I, now I'm at the four, and it does nothing. Instead Jesus. of making me go to sleep, what happens is I lay in bed and I go, hmm. I'm not anxious, <laughs> but I don't sleep. I just I'm like fuck, man. Well, they, they, you- uh, what was it? Uh, Ambien. They like there was like studies that show like it doesn't actually make you go to sleep. It just makes you forget that you are awake. Yeah, <laughs> I had a roommate. So shit. I had a roommate a long time ago who would take Ambien and half the time he would take it, he'd come back out and be like a weird zombie yeah. and yeah, like yeah. try and do stuff and like cook turkeys or something and like <laughs> it were just like Get, oh, yeah. He was really annoying. We're like, go to sleep. Yeah. Like, hey, man. And this you're trying like, to be up till 4 a.m. And he's yeah. really putting a damper Dude, on that. You're just roofing yourself. Well, yeah, no, that's literally. That's it's like, doing. oh, it's like I didn't sleep, but I don't remember what happened. So I must have gone to bed. Yeah. You know? It was really annoying. You said you were out driving your car. Fuck. <laughs> it was really annoying because he was like a, a drunk baby. Like I was falling over and we had to like, oh, now we have to take care of our roommate who oh, is not conscious. That's a fucking nightmare. My my old roommate was similar like that. Like I, I my old roommate was a 57 year old woman with like a ton of health problems. Really? Oh my God. And we lived together for like five years. But like literally she would, she couldn't fall asleep like laying down. She was like, she like smoked forever and like, she's real sweetie, but like sweetheart. But like during the pandemic was kind of the last of it. Cause like yeah. all of a sudden. I, I do a lot of work at night and the weekends. She worked during the day, but she worked in the travel industry, so she was fucking first to go, you know? Yeah. Some people say that smoking protected you from... I mean, I don't know if she ever got COVID, but she... <laughs> oh, my God. Don't encourage it, man. Don't allow me I, 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 I actually don't know anyone who's gotten COVID. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but, uh, she... I can't see germs. <laughs> <laughs> but she she used to fall asleep on our on our balcony all the time. She would have like, got the smoke, and then she, would only, she could like, only sleep sitting up so she would sit in this like wicker chair we had out there and would like be asleep she was like the the fucking weirdo lady on the balcony asleep all the time that sounds cool though i mean everyone loves a neighborhood character you know and i just happen to be able to live with one it's not uh, a problem in the summer but in the winter you have to oh yeah yeah you gotta bring her (laughs) in she's gonna scrape her off (laughs) uh but she uh she would like fall asleep sitting on the edge of her bed and then you know when you get those like kicks at night when you like yeah like in a dream you like step off a curb and you like really full body jolt she would do that, but she would have catapult her head into the wall. Oh! <laughs> and one time she like took her like TV down, like it was crazy. And I'm just like in my room, like fuck, do I have to call the like? Is, is this the time I have to call the like nine one one? Oh, she should have slept in a sleeping bag. <laughs> she should. She, <laughs> like, uh, was so was it Mike Birbiglia? Uh, Mike Birbiglia oh, yeah, has got that, that crazy sleeping. He like, jumped out of a window. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's got to be like trapped. That's like one time my brother got really drunk. How and was we he didn't... married? What the fuck am I doing wrong? <laughs> yeah, dude, <laughs> I have. No no sleep issues. Yeah, a lot of, yeah. very famous, a lot of money, that Skrilla dude. Women funny. will do anything for clout, baby. Um, no, I, women love non-threatening, uh, funny guys with a lot of money. And I'm not one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> we don't Only have one. any of those things. Mm. Um, 
But uh, once my brother got really drunk and we didn't want to deal with him and he kept saying he was going to poop his pants because we duct taped his arms. <laughs> so then we duct taped him to the toilet. Like we, <laughs> we pulled his pants down and duct taped him to the toilet. So he was like, ah, like screaming. And he, he, I think he pooped, but it was really funny. We left him there. And I remember waking up at night to go piss. And I was like, oh, fuck, my brother's duct taped to the toilet. So I just pissed in the bathtub. <laughs> I was like, oh. Oh, this is crazy. That's not safe. His legs would lose circulation. Yeah, he also yeah. didn't get to wipe either. I don't know. He probably wasn't <laughs> well. <laughs> Guantanamo. Dude, we did a lot of bad <laughs> things. We did a lot of bad things. <laughs> yeah, I was I was uh, like addicted to melatonin for a while. I am right now. Are you? That I, explains it a lot. Work? No, no. So the thing is, melatonin is like a natural enzyme your body produces. Yeah. But like with any vitamin, if you take it for too long, your body is just like, I guess I don't have to do shit anymore, and doesn't exactly. make it itself. So. When I was going to college, there were days I had to be up at like 8 a.m. class or days I didn't have to go until like 1. You know, there were two segments in the day. And so certain days I had to be up early as hell. And then other days I wouldn't have to do anything. So I was like, it would melatonin like reset your sleep schedule. So it like helps you wake up too sometimes. Huh. You can see like a deeper sleep. Yeah. Just it does a lot of But things. also like it would help me wake up like more energized in the mm-hmm. morning. And... I would just take it all the time because my sleep schedule was all over the place. Yeah. And then it just like, all of a sudden I was like, oh, I'm not going to take it. I don't have anything to do, whatever. And then I would just be like staring at the ceiling at, you know, five in the morning. And so I was like, I would just relent and just take melatonin again. And, uh, I, I ended up kicking it after like six years. <laughs> I started taking ZMA, which is just some other. Yeah, dude, yeah. which makes your loads fat. Does it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, dude. It that's does. a good man drug. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. Dude, it also makes me sleepy as hell, but. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to give you weird dreams. A lot I'm of guys. With melatonin. There's a lot like, of bro science that's like, one, it makes your, your it makes you have extra ropes, and two, <laughs> it uh, makes your testosterone go up if you take it. Okay. Over well, maybe I need time. to get back on it. I don't know. Yeah, it's a good right before bed uh, supplement. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Um, shoot those night ropes. Yeah, melatonin. I, I would take melatonin. And it didn't do anything. But then I started taking. Uh, I think it's this one brand. It's like the Dream Water, but they're little gummies. Oh. It's like a blue bottle. Yeah, and it works. But I it, and I, you can almost set like my watch to it, where I'm like, I take it now, uh-huh. and then in, in one hour. I will have a five minute window where I'm it's really easy to fall asleep and I have to like have everything perfect to where I'm not looking at my phone. I'm already <laughs> heading there because if I miss that five minute window, then I'm like it rebounds you, oh, to like fully man. awake and I'm like, well, I'm up. No, and then yes. you're cooking turkeys in the kitchen. That's how my insomnia works. <laughs> yeah. So I literally I'm not joking. Sometimes I'll get so tired that I'll be like, it's here. And I know if I miss the window, I'm fucked. So I'll literally just put my head down on my desk and sleep. Oh, wow. Like at night, like or that I'll can't lay be like on the ground. Good sleep, though. I'll be anywhere i'll just fall asleep i if i miss the window it's over there's so i have to sleep no matter what i'm doing or where i am i have a little board game room i've fallen asleep on the floor in there a ton of times Wow! just because i'm like here it is and i'm so comfy and i'm like don't don't even go to the bed just let it happen sleep right now because if you're drifting off and i'm like all right i'm getting sleepy and i oh i'd be more comfortable if i took off my shirt the like consciousness of like having to be awake to take off my shirt would wake me up no, out of the I will, you just have to like fall asleep what yeah, you're doing or dude, my you autism your, activates i'm like oh i'm i've been stimulated oh my nipples <laughs> yeah. got touched fuck dude it's too much um i, I sleep in my cl- i've been finding as an adult sleeping in my clothes is almost the way to go really yeah i just wait till i'm tired and i just sleep like like a dracula or whatever oh like i just pass I'm, out i'm one of those people like the second i'm back in my house even if i have to leave like at, in like another 30 minutes like i'll put on like a t-shirt and gym shorts so i'm yeah, like yeah. i'm always ready to go but yeah. it's like you know these clothes don't touch the bed you know are you uh your subway clothes don't it's it's not a, it's not a a germ thing like i, okay. I could give a fuck about that it's, it's more or less like i just want to be comfy and like if i could just put on comfy clothes for you know any moment i'm just like hanging around the house yeah. like yeah. it doesn't take much for me to put my jeans back you're, on and, and head out okay you're the you're the king of the castle i'm like i'm gonna dress how i want i mean yeah like, fuck yeah yeah Dude, i was no, at a, i was uh on a date with this girl and she i 
because I'm from Utah and I don't know what I didn't never know what subway clothes are. Okay, because uh, people sit on the train and then your clothes yeah. are dirty, so then you gotta you can't sit on any furniture in the house. That that's I don't know. That brings me back to like why do you live in a city that you hate? Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, like but, why do you hate? Like why do you do so much stuff to separate exactly. yourself from the place you live? Yeah, <laughs> like, but so I never even heard of this concept. So we get back to our house. It's like two a.m. Yeah, we, we rode the subway and so she's like, we're not gonna do anything. I'm like, okay, that's fine. So then she's like, take off all your clothes, and I'm like. <laughs> all right we're not gonna whatever and so we're like making she didn't have furniture because she just moved into a thing so we're on her bed i'm i have none of my clothes on except my underwear mm-hmm. and we're just making out and i'm like i'm getting mixed signals here we're not like yeah. we're, are we yeah, gonna yeah. have sex and she's like no i'm like all right but i'm I mean, so close <laughs> i'm, I'm it w- fully it w- hard yeah. in my thin ass very sheer underwear <laughs> and then i i think i would talk to mike or diego they're like yeah it's subway clothes i'm like oh what? okay i guess I yeah I guess that makes sense, but that happened to me when I moved here and I immediately I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, your clothes are dirty from the subway. And I was like, I have to go. I I can't. I I immediately was like, oh, you suck and are lame. No, no. I, I could never date someone who cares about germs like i was like i'm gonna eat something off the floor eventually in front of you but like you're gonna hate it yeah. like i'm I, out dude I would never uh not get naked in front of a woman though <laughs> <laughs> it would be so funny yeah. if you, you, go, you get naked and then you're like all right i gotta get out of here <laughs> I, I pulled up pulled up my clothes and just walk out <laughs> yeah 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 or sit, sit on the subway naked. on the subway yeah in your underwear it's like i gotta take these off i'm sorry it's i don't want to get my clothes dirty i can wash my body <laughs> Dude, skin I'm, problem, skin I'm already so fucking weird. Dating me has to be a nightmare. The amount of grace you have to give me when you're like, oh, yeah, my boyfriend doesn't want me to touch him because he got tired and fell asleep on the floor wearing his clothes like a vampire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and so I can't have you being weird about shit, too. Yeah. Like, we only one of us gets to. I mean, you could be weird, but that's too much. Germs, especially people. Who, if you're weird about germs, you're definitely not going to be cool when I'm like, hey, I forgot to book a hotel. We're sleeping in the car. Car or whatever weird shit I'm gonna do eventually. I, mean, I I give women a lot of credit because they date some fucking weirdos sometimes. They really do. I, I used to tour. Don't give them credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, every woman on Twitter is just like, I dated the biggest loser. He sucked. He did it. He didn't bathe for two oh, months. I, I straight. do love that whole like he trend ate, of girls yeah. who like hate the person they're dating. But it's like you dated him. He ate his own feces for <laughs> two months. He he had a dead cat that he slept on for his pillow and you're like why would you hang around this person yeah. let alone be in the yeah. same route like date them I, just I, telling on themselves oh absolutely one million percent and it's like i'm before. begging you to date someone you actually like <laughs> every woman i've dated is a beautiful princess angel <laughs> and i have nothing bad to say about any of them all my exes are perfect beings and the next one will be too <laughs> there you go there you go the uh yeah i mean i i went on tour with a, a pop punk band and i was doing like tour managing and photography and merch and whatever needed to get done and fucking the singer of the band would he would like sleep with his eyes open every night like he like and <laughs> he'd, be, he'd, he'd be out he would be totally out and his eyes would be like half open it was so like freaky and uh and you know he was one of those people like in the morning like he would look like a different person and his skin would like rebound when it like touched the sun <laughs> that's what this guy does really? he's evil in the morning <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i avoid him you gotta put your face on first you know but uh but he had like the most beautiful loving girlfriend who just like loved everything about him and it's oh, like that's so nice. what a dream yeah. yeah i give i mean listen all my anyone i've ever lived with gets like a, a huge amount of credit except for the girl who used to hit me that girl doesn't get any credit <laughs> also I she's used, from spain go back to your country <laughs> i used to date a girl who hit me she was a real loser <laughs> <laughs> you dated her <laughs> I, know, no. I broke up with her okay good, good, after good. a couple times of hitting yeah, me yeah. that's me telling on myself yeah. you know Dude, the sex was crazy crazy of course it was the type of woman who will throw a remote control at your face full speed uh, the girl i dated who was mentally ill was also really good in bed yeah dude it rocked <laughs> she i, I listen i like passion so there was a lot of other stuff that was cool if you're if, dating a mentally ill person right now and they're not fucking you you <laughs> you're, you're getting a raw deal yeah it's true dude it's Sorry. so true you're being ableist yeah, right you're, now Mac. i am being ableist nothing's funnier than people being like you can't be mean to mentally ill people and it's like but i'm suffering they're so mean to me yeah dude. what are you talking about that's just a person being a bad person i'm just saying like it is 
<laughs> oh man, yeah, what a time. It it happened. I was also so young. I literally didn't understand that it women shouldn't hit men until I was like in my late twenties. <laughs> I, I remember when I first moved to New York, I would tell, I would start dating people and I would tell them about my experiences just in life in general. And they'd be like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Like oh, people no. act like that where you're from. And I was like, I, I don't know. Is that not, they're just like, I didn't, I understood, I understood the context of what being woke was online and stuff, but I didn't understand like how far removed from the culture I was yeah. until I moved here. And I was like, yeah, I mean like what I've, I've I don't like I don't like when girls pinch me really hard when I embarrass them and they're like we like physically hurting you I was like yeah and it was like I would never that's abuse and I was like what are you sure I'm still like that I'm like that's not abuse if, you, if it's a pinch so that's, just, that's just your mom pinching a kiss. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, I guess. I mean, that's bad now that I think about it. I'm like, oh, you're right. That is like really fucked up to like <laughs> be physically afraid of your girlfriend if yeah. you say something. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, get, off, get away from me. Don't hurt me. It's like, yeah, I guess now I'm, that makes sense. But whatever. Don't date Latinas <laughs> or Spanish women in that case. He's, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you're right. And I won't stop. <laughs> yeah, it just sounds like you weren't like, you're man enough to handle it, you know? <laughs> you sound like her, motherfucker. <laughs> you're lucky you're far away. She, she right would literally be like, if you hate it so much, fight me back, bitch. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like, all right. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a tough situation. <laughs> yeah, what do you do? <laughs> you're like, no, I want to be good. Yeah, I remember my mom would start fights with my dad. Yeah? Like, it'd be like out of nowhere. And my dad would like... Again, that my dad's the sweetest, least violent person I've ever met in my life. He would like, what the, you dad? like <laughs> just say, just raise his voice a little bit. Yeah. And then she would be like, everything would be nice the week after. That would be like the nicest. And I'm like, she's starting shit with him. So he gets like a little like, ah, and then it like it levels them both out. <laughs> yeah. It's <dude>. so <laughs> insane. That is, she thought it was hot, dude. I guarantee it. They just like to stir the pot, man. Yeah, it does. I, I don't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you get bored. I've, I've, yeah. I guess in my regular life, I haven't, I haven't had people stir the pot since I've been dating as like a grown man. But I, because I'm already the pot's constantly being stirred. I'm like a fondue pot. Mm. That little arm is in there stirring all the time, constantly. My That's fondue, right? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about because sure. it's like hot liquid cheese or yeah, chocolate, yeah, and it has yeah. to keep moving or it'll harden. You get that little film on the top, yeah, yeah, man, yeah I get it. You've been in the city too long. Your fancy fondue. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Your French words. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> I guess. So. Yeah, I don't. Know. I think I've gotten. I've gotten too good at being alone. I think is the problem. Like you just get so good at doing things on your own that sometimes you like. You don't need no man. I, I don't. You know, <laughs> and it's it's something that's like. I've done a lot of work on and then you meet people like, you know, go on dates and stuff and like date other people. And it's like, oh, you haven't done that kind of work. Like you, you are trying to fill a void, you know, instead of like making an addition. Those are those people that are like, I just broke up with, I'm on a date right now and I just broke up with my boyfriend last week. Yeah. Like yeah. people who like just can't, Brutal. they just can't be in their own company. And it's like, wow, I treat myself so well. Like I take my ass to brunch, you know, I look forward to it. Yeah. And it's just, you got to do things for yourself or else like, yeah, you're constantly like seeking validation from somewhere else. People want to be needed. Yeah. I'm, I fucking hate that. <laughs> I don't want to be needed. I want to be wanted. I want to yeah, be your okay. option. Yeah, yeah. Because if you need me and I'm not your option, then you don't choose me. Yeah. Then yeah. if I'm not chosen, I don't feel appreciated. I don't feel good. I don't like it. it makes me crazy. <laughs> I was going to say, I want that Eastern, Euro Eastern European. Yeah, dude. dude. <laughs> you need me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, he's... I'm the best thing that's ever happened to you <laughs> and ever will happen to you. Yeah, he loves that. We're the exact <laughs> opposite, dude. Because I've had problems where I've dated people where I'm like, she can't function without me. Or like, she'll let me, she would let me do anything because she needs me. So I hate that. I don't like that. And then he'd be like, you're so stupid. I think, I, I think I'm somewhere firmly in the middle. <laughs> I want a little of both. But yeah, dude. It makes me Because I've out also of my dated mind. people who are like, oh, like, I have to remind this person that they're dating me and I need to, like, uh, you know, it's well, they're not Well, they're not choosing you hard enough. Oh, that's true. Yeah. See, because if you have someone who makes you feel needed, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to, actually literally be needed i want to feel needed yeah 
Yeah. Well, it's like, like I said, it's that big thing of like you're either filling like a void or like a, like adding something to someone's life. You it's know, when someone is hyper competent and can do anything, but still chooses to ask you for help, that's special. Yeah. When someone is incompetent, is the kind of person who literally can't drive in New York or find their way around, even though maps exist, or like to call the bank because they have anxiety or whatever. Yeah. I mean, these are really specific things yeah, that I, I would give. I would give someone grace on certain things. You yeah. know what I mean? But when it becomes a pattern, like oh, you literally can't take care of yourself. Yeah, I see. I want. I want that life MSG. I want. I want a little yeah, bit of an enhancer that yeah, also still yeah. gives me a little bit of a headache. You know? Exactly, <laughs> dude. What happened? We're gonna talk about this later. Oh, why? Dude. Why are you like that? Oh, it's so hot when someone calls you out and they're like, "Hey, this was stupid." <laughs> You're like, "Oh my god, it was." Yeah. You're yeah. paying attention. It's kind of hot. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Oh man. Yeah, call me out on my shit, dude. I kind of <laughs> suck sometimes, huh? You love me anyway, though. Nasty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's cool. I love it, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I think we're really we're making we're making real moves here. We're making yeah, real progress. <laughs> <laughs> See, I I suck. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, man. Not Mac. No. Dude, he's a super simp for his girlfriend when he has one. Oh that's, man. I know, that's why I don't What what would you do though if you found out your girlfriend was one of those people who are like writing that wacky shit about you on Twitter though? Like that like I secretly hate my boyfriend type um, tweets you know i think i'm the type of psychopath where i have when it comes to like someone if someone is trying to defame me <laughs> i will be in the reply i will reply and quote tweet and be like no this isn't me let's start this it's, you, i'll be you doing post- a press conference to tell my side of the story yeah it's like <laughs> yeah. oh you put this on a public forum well i'm in public and i'm i'm, I'm here let's do it yeah you're a public facing figure you can you get, apply for some libel uh you know i don't think i would ever like it, bring, bring, get the courts involved i think it, i think it's just one of those things where i would be like nah no i'm yeah. i'm not gonna i would never like bring courts involvement yeah, that's I like i don't need but it, it's yeah i don't it's just so weird when people everyone just wants clout i think that's what it is yeah everyone was, just wants something that like gets some some kind of it's the tried and tested method. People were doing it on TV in 1940. <laughs> my fucking wife to the moon. <laughs> oh, I hate. I'm fat and I hate my hot wife. Like that's the. It's Ricky Ricardo. It's it, it's. We've just gone full circle. Like I, people are just like, oh yeah, this is like a bit. It's. At it, it, first, it was all these guys who hate their wives. Oh, the old ball and chain, yeah, the stupid. Yeah. And now you go on Twitter, and it's like it's you know 30 year old women who are like ah oh, my boyfriend shits his pants and his pillows are gross but um and then people are like yeah queen get rid of him and she's still see- dating him you know it was funny i'm gonna i'm gonna to my own horn right now uh, that you asked that question i'm like what would i do and i'm like what have i done in the past and i'm like i've never had any of my exes say anything bad about me oh the the worst that I had to uh, one of my exes was her mom told her she's like I like Mac I don't like Mac for you oh. and I was like okay <laughs> I like that I like how that feels my my last ex didn't have like social media at all like she wasn't up to date she like didn't have a Twitter she like barely used Instagram and That's it what was you want. it was the dream I like I I made some like stupid like everything is a cake joke when that was like a big thing a couple years ago and she didn't know what i was talking about like yeah. that weird trend where oh, that, like that everything was like a fucking piece of cake and she's like what are you talking about and i'm like oh my god she's so off how much you don't know about yeah, this like, i wish i didn't know that was my this last info i don't want to have and it's forced upon me my last ex had no idea who i was and when she found out i did comedy she was like hmm stupid and then <laughs> and like didn't <laughs> care that's, at that's all and best. never yeah. did it rocked and then when we broke up we she was like i'm never gonna look at your social media for the rest of my life uh and i was like i'm not gonna look at yours that's it's gross it would mm. just make me feel bad yeah and nice we lie. Ha- and we haven't i haven't i really? haven't looked her up one time i, was, I, was, I never I was, will for the rest of my life i will never look at her i've I mean, looked at her up 20 times <laughs> You're a, it just hurts your feelings yeah. oh of course but There's sometimes just, it feels good to feel something <laughs> oh dude i'm the kind of person who once i'm like i'm done i'm Really? Uh, yeah, I can very easily. It does make people crazy. I'm the kind of person who you can get the last word in, and I'll just ghost you forever. And it, I think it makes people crazier than you. Like, yeah, engaging. Yeah. The, so my ex only had like a Pinterest, 
and that's like the only thing she was active on and like in moments of weakness i'll still like check it occasionally like oh looks like she's planning a trip to italy oh <laughs> wow that's so funny oh but it's it's uh oh, she looks pin- like she's, she's planning her her fall wardrobe already okay this fucking bitch is pinning men's watches <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> one of them was a Rolex. You just fall to your knees. Why? <laughs> Where is she getting all this money? <laughs> yeah, Dude, it's so it's, funny. Yeah, but pinning it's... extra large condoms on her Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> they make extra large. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> oh man, triple yeah. Magnum. You have to special order them. <laughs> Come on. Oh, tailored like a suit? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Bespoke? Condoms. Yeah, why'd she, why would she be in that? <laughs> doing it to hurt you. <laughs> Going to the, the, yeah, the British high streets to, to get a bespoke condom. <laughs> Dude, one of my greatest regrets and like the hardest I cringe at myself sometimes is when I was getting divorced, I like... I really posted about stuff. I also cringed. <laughs> <laughs> Watching you get divorced, I was like, God damn it. You, gotta, you gotta post through the pain, was, you know? Dude, it was so brutal. It was just, but dude, there's just Wait. way too many feelings. Did I ever tell you to stop at any point? <laughs> no, you never helped me. You never gave me <laughs> I don't, I've never advice. been there. I dude, <laughs> I will say that if you, I think that you, I think I handled it really well considering, and I think you would handle it about as well. Oh, no, I would have a, a complete meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> if my wife divorced me, it's going to be a problem for everyone who knows me. <laughs> and then you work, and two uh, of your three jobs were with her. Dude, yeah. Ooh, it was so fucking that's brutal. brutal yeah, dude. that's rough. She was a waitress at the comedy club I performed at. Mm. I would literally be crying hearing about her hooking up with dudes and then i would have to go perform she was right to divorce me though so it's like whatever <laughs> good for her queen dump him don't oh, no. for real dude she's doing so much better now that she's that it's crazy how much better her life got when she stopped being with me it's crazy how bad my ex's lives are <laughs> dude there, there's like a wacky thing of like all the people i dated in my early 20s all like almost immediately after dating me went on to marry like cops and military personnel. Oh, interesting. And I have no, like I've been trying to figure out what the connection is. I know what it is. What is it? It's because you're a really big guy and the types of women who like you like powerful men. And so in their mind, if you're in the but military, power, you're yeah, a cop, per- you have some kind of power and they're into it. Uh, it's like perceived power, though, yeah, versus like actual power. Per- I, perception I'm, is I'm reality, pushing, baby. Like, real Newtons of energy, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Fuck those cops. Not, not, you know, pulling a gun in someone's face or, you know, strangling minorities kind of power. <laughs> dude, I'll do both of those things yeah. and be strong. Oh, man. This, this one girl I dated, like. A meet, like started dating some dude from the Air Force, and all of a sudden, like all of her Facebook posts were like, "My airman is leaving for <laughs> so oh, don't fun. don't try to console me unless you know what it's like to have an airman of your own." To post so, about <laughs> your the Air, Air Force. Man. Your That's airman. like the it would be like, cooler what are you dating to po- Michael Jordan. What the fuck? <laughs> like, it would be cooler oh. to post about your boyfriend in the Coast Guard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really. That's more dangerous. <laughs> a much noble position. Much more noble position. Yeah, you know, for real. That's so funny. My airman. My airman. Oh my god, he's gonna go sit in air conditioning in Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna sit in air conditioning in a billion dollar jet. Yeah, yeah. fuck. Oh, it's it's so silly. But I'm like, what? Yeah, like me, like especially at that time was like peak punk era of like me being in like a metalcore band. Yeah, and, like, I think I think there's a lot of uh, people who will date someone and they'll be like, you know what? I want the opposite I'll, of this. I don't want this. I I. I now know. Yeah, and you were just helping them along their path for yeah. better or for worse. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm the, yeah, I'm, I'm good luck, Chuck. Yeah, yeah perfect. Mm-hmm. Do you do you have like an idea of what you do? You have like an idea of what you're going for, and you look for a specific thing. Like you have like, do you have like a tailored list of things? I personally always think I have a list, but I'm running on all instinct, baby. I, I look at someone and I go. I'm in love with you, and I try to date them. That is, it, there's no rhyme, there's yeah. no reason, there's no. I don't have to even know anything about them. It's 100 percent feelings, in- nothing else. Yeah, I think that's something that I kind of was kind of running on instincts for a while, and then I like found like what I was looking for for a bit, Ooh. and uh, 
I know what that's like now. And it's like now I'm like chasing that feeling again. And okay. it's pretty easy to know sometimes whether it's there or not. I do that all the time online. I see a woman. And I'm like, I'm going to DM her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hi, queen. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of the blue. <laughs> I see you're complaining about your boyfriend on Twitter. You should dump him. He really did reply to that. He went and just DM the hottest girl last night in front of all of us. You we know, were all it, laughing so hard. It, it, he just said a hi with the waving <laughs> of <laughs> and It's so funny. Hi. It's so funny and to do that. his account's so insane. So yeah. I'm just imagining this incredibly hot e-girl is just like, what the Dude, fuck, well, I man? Do it, I do it publicly on their comments too. oh <laughs> just, hell yeah hey, bro women love confidence you know they really do that's the secret of confidence i was joking unless you're serious yeah 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 jk unless but yeah it's it's so you know it's one of those things where you kind of you, you know it when you see it you kind of feel the chemistry and i think that's like a big thing it's like hell yeah the vibes you know and okay and, and it's uh it, you, especially like later in life like we're all in our mid-30s like you know, you kind of know you've been through a lot. You've kind of experienced a lot. You kind of know like what kind of behaviors and what kind of personalities work best with yours. And later in life, <laughs> I'm, I'm towards the end, man. I got another good ten years, maybe. I don't no, know. They just raised the life they, expectancy they to 120. That. Oh, I need to hop on my. I gotta follow my Italian roots and get on that Mediterranean diet. You know, <laughs> yeah. they want they want to keep you in the workforce for as long That's, as possible. You know, it really and is. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like in the workforce, I'm doing okay. You know, photography is one of those careers where you can kind of do it for. There's no real. I'm not a football player. You know? Yeah, <laughs> like my body is. I mean, my body is deteriorating at a rapid pace. You but, could be, you could be taking photos well into your 90s. I, I might have eyes. to be. I will definitely have to be. Uh, how do you, how do you just like us, we'll podcast into the 90s. Yeah, yeah. I need the I need my Patreon for my pod to get off the ground, and we can really uh, set set it to cruise control. <laughs> Dude, podcasting is going to blow up when our generation gets to the 60s. Oh no, yeah. No, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Podcasting is over. Yeah, no, it really AI, is. AI is going to take over. So I think long. there was actually an article that just came out that was like, "Who's actually listening to podcasts anymore?" And it's like, no. Yeah, blue, <laughs> co- blue collar workers at their jobs. I, yeah, yeah dude. That's I it. listen to podcasts all the time. And, uh, you know. And and uh, moms at home. Oh man, and hot, cool mm. moms. I, I need the, I need the... And anyone who listens to our podcast is a perfect angel. Also, we have a bunch of listeners in the Air Force. I respect you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, everyone who, who no longer subscribes to our Patreon, you're still beautiful queens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. And all I, of I our exes. I forgive you. <laughs> yeah, dude. If you're, you're you're not a former subscriber, you're an ex. Yeah. yeah. And I love you. I'll never say anything <laughs> bad about you, no yeah. matter if you won't support me or not. Wait, how long have you been doing photography? Oh God! Um, like professionally, I mean, I graduated like photo school 2010. So I photo guess school. I went to photography school. It was a big scam. It was very funny. I was, yeah, I was never heard of it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of photography schools, but mine, the president of the school, got indicted the year previous to mine for embezzling like 4.5 million dollars. Good for cool. him. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he was still the president when I was there, just as like a fake figurehead kind of deal to like not raise too many suspicions. Uh, and then my school closed like six or seven years after I, I left. But you learned some good shit there. I did. It was like, uh, you know, a lot of pro gear, you know, we we're using like industry standard stuff, but they also taught us a lot of like business shit. So I got good with like, knowing copyright laws and knowing mm. fucking tax write-offs and there all that you go. stuff. So you actually learned it's kind of like a trade school. It's very, yeah. I mean, what I do photography wise is very, trade like you know skilled labor kind of things yeah like, yeah, I, yeah. Like, you know and uh, I think anyone who's tried to take a photo and be like oh shit <laughs> like <laughs> respect any photographer yeah i mean it, it, i can't wait till i have to use my savings to go to trade school so i can be an electrician or something yeah. you just got a shadow an electrician for six years <laughs> yeah no big deal <laughs> you're yeah. set for life yeah i mean it's it's photography is one of those things like the the kind of work i do is a lot of you know event work and things like that it's not necessarily like artistic work but that pays for me to do like you know the, the books and stuff i do you don't so. use it to uh hit up women and be like hey i'll take photos of your cosplay <laughs> why don't you go- i'll do it for free baby you know, i don't have too much to my studio i don't have my too studio much- <laughs> that's in my bedroom <laughs> i don't have too many anime girl cosplay overlap in my in my fan page wow. i don't think but hey if you're out there and you got money off I'll, I'll photograph your cosplay outfit why not yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get the money up front yeah that's true <laughs> always but uh yeah it's it's fun and that kind of work pays for me to do the fashion stuff i do so and there's some overlap what's the fashion stuff uh i brought you some books but uh, i do a series called no invite and it's basically there it's kind of a portrait series uh of what i can do 
sneaking into New York Fashion Week. So uh, I kind of was like always interested in Fashion Week. It was this weird thing when I was li- growing up in Central Jersey. There was this weird like almost uh, – like public access adjacent kind of channel called the Metro Network. And it was very like New York culture. It was like Marky Ramone on, you know, eating pizza on St. Mark's place. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> but they would, um, during fashion week broadcast the fashion shows. And I'm like 12 or 13 years old. And like, sometimes the tops would be see through and I'd be like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, dude, there'd be some titties. But like from that, it would be like, Oh, I like this stuff got ingrained in my head. And when I moved up to Jersey city, I was like, oh, this is happening like right here. I can go find it. And that's kind of what I did. I found out where stuff was happening and I had no connection to the fashion world at all. Yeah. But I started photography like in the music world and you know, you fucking sneak your camera in the shit. You like don't have a ticket, but you get in the back door. Like, so I just started finding out where stuff was happening and then like kind of just walking in. Like it was kind of this weird thing where like developing the confidence to ask a stranger to take their picture it's like yeah. this weird barrier and i'm not like an anxious person i'm a very outgoing person no i feel that though when i see there's i've seen like tiktok videos of someone just approaching like hey can i take your photo and the person's always like oh and then also it's like that is like it does feel like a weird question yeah. but i do see and, yeah it, it is interesting but the results are like oh of course you want to take their photo you saw what could be uh-huh. and everyone's like what the fuck are you asking me right now yeah and people and people also now are like suspicious of everyone you know they're like why yeah, yeah. are you doing a prank what are you yeah. gonna shoot me with a gun yeah are you going to traffic me for some reason do you remember do you remember the app be real it's probably still going oh yeah yeah i think so where you have to like 90 percent. yeah it would take a photo of the front and the back camera yeah yeah and so 90 percent of people just like oh, i'm playing doing nothing blah blah and but i always wanted to take like a good be real of when i was walking out and i'd ask people to take be reels of me oh and they would always get really weird about like That's hey so took funny. a photo of me and i'm like what'd you do <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you really took it wrong funny. but yeah it real people don't it's, like their photo getting taken up yeah there. but it's, it's also like a weird thing of like the fear of rejection which is like it's so silly to think that it's like, oh, they can all, you, all they do is they can say no and that's the worst thing that's gonna happen but it, like it, it hurts like internally sometimes dude and but i i stumbled upon like a fashion week party once that was i was it was right outside of like in meatpacking, like I was coming out of the Whitney and I like walked a couple blocks and found it and I walked in and there's all these people dressed up all crazy and shit. And I was like, that barrier was so low because everyone's like begging to yeah. be seen, you know, and that's kind of how it started. And um, like the next season, I found out where like Kanye was doing his like Yeezy season five at like Pier 59 or something. And I showed up and there were a ton of models and a ton of rappers and all kinds of crazy shit going on. And I started taking pictures of that. And I would always make zines and stuff going to punk shows. And I would go on tour and make a zine of the last tour to sell on the next one to yeah. get some fucking Taco Bell money. And I was like, I haven't done a zine in a while. And I have this collection of photos I don't know what to do with. And I started No Invite. And ever since then, it's just become this thing. I've, I've been doing almost two books per year. And it's it's just this fun challenge of like, I love exclusivity yeah, and going man. places that they're trying to keep me out of like even uh on on my podcast shane we talked about the the cruise yeah uh and i went on a cruise a, a couple months ago and there's like the diamond lounge that like only the people who've been on like a thousand cruises are allowed in the special lounge i'm, like, I'm getting that fucking lounge at some point yeah and sure enough i did i like followed somebody in one day and uh there was nothing in there Dude, <laughs> that's really, me. It was, like free coffee and i'm like cool that's whatever. how i feel when i see a women's bathroom <laughs> <laughs> what's going on in there hey hey there's a fucking couch in here i'm yeah. just laying on I was it say, what's you're, up, ladies? you're just like alex jones and bohemian grove exactly <laughs> that's exactly I right in there see what they're yeah, doing what is, why why don't they want me there what are they hiding you know yeah, dude. but uh it's it's just fun because like literally people ask me all the time how i do it and the, the the mantra lately has been you can just walk in yeah like it's confidence it's it's a thousand percent confidence and if you walk in the door like you're walking in the door of your house like people like human nature is you don't want to like stop someone like if you look annoyed like if you you know there's like the mean mug in new york you walk around and like people like don't beg you for shit or they don't try to sell you fruit mm-hmm. snacks in the subway station or something yeah, like yeah. if you just have a look like people are like i don't want to fuck with i don't want to like 
you know, I don't have bother that. this guy. <laughs> people are always bothering me, yeah. asking me for directions got, or money. He, he got like, such a nice face. He really you know? does have a kind face. <laughs> yes. you have a kind body. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, people see them, they're like, oh, "This guy's fine." Yeah, and uh, you know, like I, I got into the Fendi show. Um, Wait, can, we see, can we see your "I belong here" face? Oh, just, just, just like straight. You thousand so, yard stare. I can't even do it. Um. You know, and I, there was the Fendi show, it was this big show at the fucking like Hammerstein ballroom, and there was fucking, you know, uh, metal railings and security, and it was like a spectacle. And I just walked in and looked like I was annoyed. And I kind of like even like looked at the security guard, like mm, this bullshit again. And the guy was like, you got it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I just walked right in and fucking took a picture of like Kate Moss. Like it was wild. And, and that's all it is. Like I, I'll give you one really good story because it was it was fucking it's my best one so far. Like I've I've had some pretty crazy, you know, in scenarios, I guess. But there Wait, was one. This is the second best story. Your first best one will be on the Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Patreon.com slash cowboy boys. I didn't realize you were doing Patreon. Please but I can support us. You, you're, you're invited. Oh, but I, I don't. I don't no got shit to do. If there's anything, I love the talk. So, yeah. Uh, if you haven't noticed, but uh, so this one, it was it was. February 2020. So it was like literally right before the scam demic happened. <laughs> uh, but um, the I was between shows. It was like between Men's Fashion Week and Women's Fashion Week. And so there was kind of like a weird half and half, but there's a lot of parties that happen because everyone was it was like right in the air where everyone's like, is it, stuff there, gonna get shut there down? There was no or? change just yet. Oh, okay, so there, there wasn't been that, there wasn't like this fear hanging in the air, but people like started wearing masks and stuff, and and it was interesting, but. There was this party. I, I got like a list from someone who worked at like Getty Images, had like the whole list of all the shit. And um, there was one that just said like Netflix net a porte party. And I'm like, okay, well, it's between two shows I'm going to go to. Let me go see what's happening over here. And then I ended up like finding myself in line. Like they put the, the velvet rope around where I was standing. And then I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to just see what happens. And the guy, they go up to the, um, you know, the, nice girl with the clipboard and she's like what's your name and I'm like dan bassini and they're like mm, you're, oh you're not on the list like because obviously and because i'm not <laughs> and then i go oh yeah jim stevens was supposed to set this up and they're like jim stevens like oh no he's not on the list he's uh you know he's he's out of town but he works at the secaucus office and he knows i like this stuff he said it'd be no problem to get me you know get me on the list and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to have Laura speak to you if you want to step aside. And then I, you know, go over there and hang out with Laura. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll text my coordinator inside and, and, you know, get this all sorted out for you. And I'm like, yeah, no problem. Because, again, what's the worst going to happen? Like, exactly. I, there was no plan for me to be in here anyway. The worst thing is my night continues as it was. It feels like this person does like, oh, I don't know what to do in this situation because it, it does not supposed to happen. Yeah. So they shift it over to this person and they're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Then they text uh, that guy and that guy's like, Dude, I don't I'm know. not going to respond to you. I'm in, it, I'm in Tahiti getting yeah, drunk. <laughs> yeah. So she doesn't get the response. Yeah. She's like, I don't know what I have to do. But, yeah, she was like, oh, who's, who's Jim Stevens? I'm like, oh, he's a producer at the Secaucus office. He knows I love this stuff. He, you know, he said it'd be no problem, but that was two weeks ago. It probably fell between the cracks. Yeah, we yeah. forgot to make the call. And they're, oh yeah, no problem. We'll get this all sorted. And literally, like being more patient and friendly is so much easier than like oh, people yeah. who are like, "Do you know who I am?" It's like that yeah. doesn't get you anywhere. It's such dumb bullshit. Yeah, yeah. But if you, know, I'm like, oh yeah, no big deal, whatever. And they're like, oh Jim Stevens, yeah, you're all set. And they just like let me in, like a name I completely made up. Yeah, from us, I knew like Netta Porte has like some office near. Secaucus, New Jersey, dude, and they let me in, and then it ended up being this like hyper specific, like industry party that was only for this like Netflix show. They did like their own Project Runway kind of show, yeah, yeah. But it was all the contestants from the show. We still are like friends. I like talk to them like regularly on Instagram still because I went into the party. I wasn't supposed to yet, and made friends with everybody. Okay. I made friends with the people who threw the party, like who could kick me out. And uh, the this one uh woman alexa chung she was one of the co-hosts of the show with tan france from queer eye yeah 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 but alexa chung she's from the uk she usually doesn't go to new york fashion week but she's like a fashion like icon and i've been trying to get her photo for four years at that point and she was at the party and we ended up like dancing to robin together by the end of the night that's so it funny was, and you got her photo oh yeah yeah i got a, i got her photo and it was just like this surreal moment there was like 150 people in this party like tons of food uh, all the contestants from the show, there were models wearing like 
the winner's clothing and it was just this unreal thing and everyone just fucking hung out for three hours and they'd all top shelf at liquor and you know whatever and it was just because i like bullshitted my way in the door do you think though people are like oh it's it's dan bassini <laughs> He, we'll get we'll get street cred. Let him pretend like we're <laughs> we're letting him I, in. I think you're very much <laughs> overestimating. Because but the thing is, all of these doors are mostly run by like PR interns. Like they don't know what the yeah. fuck. Bassini going on. is yeah. a name that commands a little like. Yeah. Oh shit! When I say I'm Shane Smith, people are like, oh yeah, right. okay, bud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will say now that I look like this, it hindered me into sneaking into places in the past oh, yeah. uh -huh. so noticeable yeah nowadays though here in new york i've snuck into a bunch oh, of yeah. weird places because yeah. i'm like hey uh I, I just look like i'm supposed to be there yeah man with face tattoos who's not currently homeless or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, nodding yeah. out on heroin he's gotta yeah. be doing dude something. i've had people like just be like hey are you supposed like like hey you're the guy and i'm like i'm the guy yep. and like welcome me into a yeah, place yeah. and they thought i was like someone else or whatever it's very funny yeah it's it's i mean that uh, you could definitely come with me next season yeah, <laughs> we'll dude. go in everywhere you know yeah, man it's literally it's it's the thing it's like oh you have tattoos on your face and you know you you probably are somebody, you know, you wouldn't have them if you weren't, you That's know, exactly what they think in their mind. And it's like, you got it. You got to be something cool. Cause you're not working. You're not, you're not a cashier at the grocery store <laughs> that they know of. It's also funny when someone's like, Oh yeah, you're famous. You're that other famous guy. You're <laughs> yeah, like, no, yeah, I'm thinking yeah, for a different yeah, famous guy. Yeah. Oh like, dude. Whatever. That's so but, that, that rocks. But yeah, there is a thrill about like getting in places. Do you, are you, do you have like a special get up or is it just your normal clothes? Dude, that's or? kind of the thing. I dress like, like nothing special at all which i think also kind of helps because i'm not like i know people who dress like way over the top to be like yeah. i want to blend in a fat i want to there's or, people who literally uh it was actually the cover of volume six that i did where this guy showed up it was september fashion week it was like 90 degrees out showed up in a sprinter van with a bunch of pr people and he jumps out he's wearing a full head to toe like double down puffer coat with the hood up and like sunglasses on and everyone's scrambling around trying to get his picture and i got this really good shot of him and then he doesn't go into the show he just like piles back into the van and they leave and i was like who the fuck was this guy and someone got his instagram and he had like no like a thousand followers or something he was like a total nobody that was very funny but to put on this giant show and i was like should i put this guy on the cover of the book like and i'm like no actually that's what it's all about it's yeah. all about the spectacle it's all about the bullshit and the facade like that's a thousand percent like what it's all about so you put him on the back i put him on the front, <laughs> oh, got the yeah, front cover. Yeah, dude. and he uh, made it yeah and it's it's just it's so funny i think the volume three the guy he's got like a weird mickey mouse ski mask and big gold fronts oh, and yeah dude and uh like same deal like i don't think he was anybody particular he was just there making a scene but in terms of like getting into these places like i just wear i got into that um the net a -Porte party wearing like a pink amazon basic sweatshirt and nice. like, jeans and uh it you know it doesn't matter when I started dressing like I worked at a gas station, I, I've never gotten like more outfit compliments. So if I only knew that like that's what I'm saying. Thirty plus years ago, do you get compliments? No, because they're too intimidated by. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I also don't leave the house. Yeah, but. I literally found this like workwear place that it just supplies uniform workwear, and I buy like the work shirts, and you can get anything you want uh embroidered on it because it's supposed to say like you know yeah, shop foreman or something, you know. And I would just I put like like mute like song lyrics or dumb quotes on it yeah and literally i have people like stop me on the subway to be like where'd you get your shirt from i have like a jacket from them like where'd you get your jacket like literally people grabbing me that's so like, funny it's just the car and it's, it's, it's yeah it's literally mm -hmm. though like a 70 dollar canvas jacket and it's like if i knew i could just dress like i worked at a gas station like for the last 30 years <laughs> i'd be killing it dude you, yeah you gotta know i've kind of had the same style my whole life so you tell me i still dress like a kid <laughs> I used to wear very tight pants for a long time. I'll say that. Yeah. Which is silly because I like really big thighs. So I always looked weird. Yeah. I have like calves the size of tree trunks. So I physically I can't fit into like everyone used to wear like Levi's 5'11s or whatever. I physically I can't. can't do it. I, I also can't. I would have to wear like skateboard stretchy pants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I also have just big legs. And I realize now that was a fashion mistake on my part. 
My bad, everybody. <laughs> I looked I looked dumb and stupid. But um, yeah, the, the, besides tight jeans, I've just always been like, I don't know, a piece of shit skater, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I went through the girl jeans phase. You know, I was like a full on like MySpace scene kid. I did back that in the too. day. I did that too in high school. That was kind of a rebellion thing, though. Yeah. It wasn't uh, no one in my town really cared because everyone was a cowboy and they wore tight jeans anyway. Oh, true, true. If it was socially acceptable, I'd be wearing cargo shorts right now <laughs> I mean, they, they're kind of back just like, a you t-shirt know. that says sarcasm is my first language dude, david <laughs> cargo <laughs> david cross is living your dream dude, the, the yeah. adam uh, adam sandler oh, wear with, yeah. the, with the gigantic like gym shorts but that, adam yeah. sandler wears stuff that's so comfortable that it or like egregious no, that it becomes is? fashioning it's, okay. it's, yeah. it's when a rich person does it it's classy but yeah. when a poor yeah, yeah. person does it it's bad yeah yeah, yeah. It's, no, classes. it's true it's true it's true yeah. <laughs> So Anyways. real, King. Um, Dan, where can they find uh, your stuff? Where can they follow you online? What's uh, your podcast? Yeah, so I do a podcast called Run Into the Ground. Uh, it's a music-based podcast. Shane was just on it. Go check Ooh. out this episode. We talked about Linkin Park. Uh, we have a guest come on to talk about a record that they love or were influenced by. We have a lot of musicians, a lot of comedians, kind of anybody who does something cool. Uh, and it's been really fun. We've had a lot of like our like musical heroes we've had on. Like we just had Jeff Rickley from Thursday on. Yeah, that's crazy. Like our episode fourteen, we had um, Matt Pryor from the Get Up Kids. Whoa! <laughs> and he like was totally down the clown. Like ton of fun. He called my co-host Andrew insufferable for his music taste. Uh, ah. Very funny. Uh, so yeah, check that out. Run to the ground on uh, Instagram. Run in number two the ground on Twitter and uh, Patreon.com slash Run to the ground. All the links will be below. Yeah, uh, you can follow me at Dan Bassini on Twitter and instagram dambassini.com is my website uh you can pre-order no invite volume 10 if any of my fashion week stories sound cool uh those are, those are great photos thank you thank and you yeah i don't know if those people are celebrities or not because i don't know celebrities but i'm like they all look famous to me. I, yeah, I don't yeah. every last person looks like a model I, or i don't know that many famous people either which it kind of democratizes the book a little bit okay. like if they got a good vibe or they look cool no, they i'll take look, their picture they all look great nice and i need a new headshot soon i brought my camera damn but uh I yeah look terrible right now but <laughs> eventually yes but yeah so uh if any of those stories sound cool i i've done 10 this is volume 10 so it's a bit of a milestone uh Ooh. and yeah the books are 15 bucks dude there's some people in here that look so like normal just amazing style and then some insane people <laughs> so you gotta whole... mix it a little bit but yeah uh i think that about rounds it out for my dude plugs. you're so good at that Thank you. i forget to plug my own tour dates a bunch of times <laughs> Speaking of which, no, do it later. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, Patreon.com slash Cowboy Boys. Support us. There's going to be uh, another episode for every episode. You'll love it. Also, ShaneSmithComedy.com. Uh, a bunch of dates have been posted. All the USA da dates are final. I'm not adding any except for maybe Salt Lake at some point. I lied immediately. but So go come see me. And then um, so much UK. There's a bunch of UK on the pipeline, but right now we've got some Ireland shows and one in London and a few others on the way. So if you're in the UK, look out for me. Those are in September? I don't know what you're asking me. <laughs> they're probably in why September. You, why you call your agent. No, they're in September. Yeah, I think they are. They're in September. Go to the website. Yeah, dude. I'm going to be disrespecting America by performing in the UK on September 11th. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I will forget. You're going to miss Fashion Week, too, then. Oh, Bummer. no. I'm going to yeah. miss Fashion Week. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's okay, though. I'm going to have a good time in uh, jolly old England. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to see what it's all about. You know, I've heard see, it's bullshit. Over yeah, there. <laughs> I, I don't know. I heard the food is not great. So oh, as like awful. someone who's like vegan, it's, it's gonna be even worse. Oh, really? I'll be like beads. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, be, eat you're gonna be eating chips. All I'm the going time. to Australia next week, so we'll see. I'm going to Upside Down America. I'm really excited for that, though. Oh man, just live out like the the Simpsons episode. You have to get the boot. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, I'm all excited. Right. All right, everybody. Thank you, Dan. Uh, follow him. Listen to his podcast. And yeehaw! 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 yeehaw.